A very good afternoon to all of you. And I am Dr. Geeta Kadeprath. I'm a breast surgeon at Max Hospital, Delhi. And uh, with me today is Dr. Ankur Behel. Dr. Ankur? Yes, yes. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Ankur Behel. I'm a medical oncologist at uh, Max Hospital, Saket. So we with Dr. Geeta are uh, treating the best breast cancer patients and uh, other oncology patients. So here we are to discuss about uh, ERPR, which means estrogen positive and progesterone positive and HER2 negative breast cancer. And I'm sure Dr. Geeta will take us along many cases where we will discuss various aspects of uh, <clears throat> surgical oncology, medical oncology, as well as hormonal treatment across these patients. And uh, this is in continuation with the last lecture where we'll discuss triple negative breast cancer. And I hope in next 45, 50 minutes, we are generous enough to give you information about uh, estrogen positive and progesterone positive uh, hormonal breast cancer. Dr. Geeta. So what we're trying to highlight is that breast cancer is not one disease. It is actually, you know, till the beginning of the century, in fact, we all thought that breast cancer has to be treated in a certain way and all breast cancers can be treated. If it is triple negative, you're not doing, uh, doing hormonal, but if it is hormone, you're giving hormones. But the subtyping really was not coming through. And it is with the subtyping that we realized that breast cancer is actually multiple diseases in the sense there are subtypes to it. So like Dr. Ankur said, we've already discussed one subtype, which is triple negative. And today we will be discussing the subtype, which is ERPR positive and HER2 negative. So let me just share my screen. And, uh, and I would be actually taking you through one patient and see her through the entire range of things that are possible when a um, patient of breast cancer uh, ERPR positive presents to you. So we're trying to manage a hormone receptor positive breast cancer today. And just for a, a basic understanding, so what we know is that the breast cancer cells on their surface, they have this receptor. So if you look at this receptor, it looks like a reticle actually on the uh, surface of the cell. And what happens is the estrogen and progesterone, which is circulating in the body, it comes in and attaches to the cell and gives it the signal. So here it is attached and it gives it the signal to divide. And what are we achieving with uh, the hormone treatment? We call it the hormonal treatment, but it is actually an anti-hormonal treatment that it blocks this receptor, does not allow this hormone to attach itself to the uh, cell and prevents the tumor growth. So I'll go straight to my case then. And uh, the, this is a 49 year old premenopausal lady who presented with a lump in the right breast of one month duration. Uh, so there is not much of any uh, of, of medical or uh, menstrual history. She does not have any family history. She had uh, one child and the child was born at the age of 28 years, breastfed. She does have a history of having taken oral contraceptives for five years. So on clinical examination, there is a 2.5 into 2.5 centimeter firm non-tender lump in the, cent uh, in the upper outer quadrant, sorry, of the right breast. Uh, there is a mobile a lymph node in the axilla, no supraclavicular lymph nodes, and there is nothing on the systemic examination. So this is the mammogram. It is a speculated density that you see in the upper outer quadrant. In the right, this is the MLO view, which is the medial lateral view. And this is the craniocaudal view. So how do we determine uh, which quadrant it is? So in the MLO, you decide whether it is upper or lower. So this is upper, that's the nipple. So it is above the nipple, so it is upper. And on uh, craniocaudal, you decide whether it is outer or inner. So if you look at this, this is the craniocaudal view. So the marking or this is out on the outside. It is always placed outside, okay? So this, uh, the marking for this RCC is always towards the outer side of the breast. So here you see that this is the outer. Had it been here away from the marker, then we would have called it inner. So that's how it is upper outer quadrant tumor, okay? So on ultrasound, what you're seeing is a 2.8 into 2.5 into 1.5 centimeter irregular hypoechoic lesion. And there is a lymph node, which is 1.5 into one centimeter with loss of fatty hilum. 
we will come to the nitty gritty of all these uh, radiological things in a different lecture. So the next step, once you've established uh, that there is a lesion which is worth uh, looking at, you would go ahead and do an ultrasound guided core biopsy. So an ultrasound core, core, uh, guided core biopsy, it's an infiltrating duct carcinoma, grade two. The FNAC from the lymph node, which again is ultrasound guided, is metastatic. And her ER, PR, her to new, which is the immunohistochemistry on this tumor, is ER positive, PR positive, her to new negative. This is the pathology on core biopsy. This is what was seen. Staging investigations done then. This is a patient that we had seen kind of much earlier although this staging uh, workup is well within its limits. So you can ask, potentially ask, why not PET CT? So ultrasound abdomen, x-ray chest, and bone scan. And the clinical stage here is a T2N1, stage 2B, according to the uh, TNM classification. So in this situation, well, let me just uh, bring in Dr. Ankur here. So Dr. Ankur, we have a T2N1, ER, we are strongly positive, HER2 negative. Your comments on the staging investigations that have been done and also what do you think should be the next step? Yeah, so, so I think in this patient, since we are dealing with a strong ER, PR positive, HER2 negative breast cancer and on clinical examination, it was T2 tumor more than two centimeter and a mobile lymph node, which was palpable and which has been proven by an FNAC. So we are dealing with stage 2B uh, breast cancer. So lymph node positive, which was uh, clinically palpable, actually it comes into a definition of locally advanced breast cancer since lymph node is positive. But this patient, as we have discussed in our previous lecture, this patient is totally different from a triple negative breast cancer. The milieu, the pathology, the natural course of this patient is totally different. So as per staging workup, uh, uh, X-ray chest, uh, ultrasound abdomen, and a bone scan is sufficient as per the guidelines and as per the clinical practice. So I would be, uh, so no, nothing more from my side except from the basic biochemical uh, CBC, KFT, and LFT, and a pre-anesthesia workup. So uh, two stages, uh, two, two thoughts in this patient, either we can go for a neoadjuvant chemotherapy and go for a later surgery, either in the form of breast conservative or MRM or clinical, or we can take an upfront decision of a, since it was a mobile lymph node, although positive, but this patient we have to see is ERPR positive. So this ERPR positive, the proliferation rate, we do not have a CHI-67 report here. So the proliferation rate in such kind of uh, I would say phenotypically luminal A or luminal B kind of tumor, they do not respond well to chemotherapy. Uh, so in this patient, particularly in this patient, either ways a neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery or straight away surgery because it's a small T2 tumor, 2.5 centimeter. So I would not mind any of these, but I would prefer to give a neoadjuvant chemotherapy and later on take this patient for surgery. But both ways are right from my side. Okay, so this patient underwent uh, surgery uh, because, see, uh, one of the other reasons why you would want to do uh, chemotherapy is also to see if there is any other adjuvant that you can add. But in a hormone-sensitive tumor, the only adjuvant that you would add, <clears throat> irrespective of whether you do surgery first or you do chemotherapy first, is only hormonal treatment. Hormone, hormone, yeah. yeah. So in this patient, we took the decision, and this is kind of older patient, okay, she's about two or two, two and a half years ago. So this patient had a right breast lump wide excision. She had an axillary lymph nodal dissection because she had a positive lymph node and she had a LICAP based perforator flap oncoplasty as well. So this was the tumor and that is the uh, marking of the uh, incision. That is where is the flap and that is where we did the wide local excision. So with oncoplasty, you can take a larger area out because you have the option of filling it up with uh, perforator flap. So that is the size of the specimen. So if that's the tumor and that is the margin. So you have to take margins all around the tumor with a weight of 144. I will not go into the significance of all this. When we come to the oncoplasty lectures, I will tell you what is the significance of size and the weight of the removed specimen. 